Hello everyone, this is The Nameless One. Today we will be going over the highlights for Episode 7 of Lost Memories. Without further ado, let's begin. This first clip is of the party's initial encounter with the mysterious storyteller. Roll clip. So as you guys are traveling along, you see what looks like the light of a campfire up ahead. What do? I'm going stealthy. I don't Whoa, trust stealth. this. That is a pass. I passed by four. I attempt to do the hide and fail. I'm yes, not even foot. trying. I'm just, indifferent. I'm just keeping a distance. I'm not even trying to follow. I shall do this. Okay. I also just keep distance. I pass. Okay. <laughs> of course. I actually have the skills. So. so. As you guys get closer, your lumber-hoofed friend seems to alert what you notice to be the only occupant of the camp. They are sitting on a log with their back to you and a hood up, but you do notice that they notice you. And they call out to you and say, why don't you come and sit by the fire? It's starting to get dark out. Also, for uh, everybody's reference, it is cold now. It is winter time. It is a female voice, a slightly raspy, and she doesn't turn to look at you. I am a bit cautious. I don't walk up away, right away. I wait on the others. Are none of you guys gonna say hi at least? Are you guys gonna be rude too? Hello? <laughs> <clears throat> she tells you to uh, not be afraid and she'll let you sit by the fire with her as long as you listen to a story. Alright. Yeah, Does she have any discernible accent? What's she gonna do? Stab me? As far as you can tell, it just seems like your average equestrian accent. In other words, she's from somewhere in the middle of Equestria. <laughs> so general Equestrian, get it. So, what do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna approach. Okay. I okay. still do it. I follow behind. Hey, hey, hey! Don't leave me! Don't leave me! I am approaching, but behind the others, and I try to stay out of sight. Everybody that, as you are walking past her, you do see that she's wearing some sort of leather mask, and despite the. Uh, clarity of her voice it appears to have been stitched shut at some point and there is the distinct smell of rotting meat as you go past her you do notice that her eyes are a jaundiced yellow with red irises i'm keeping my distance and i'm not staying within her line of sight uh, i'm sneaking so. hello she she is actively watching you guys as you are sitting down so she is not just a corpse as you guys sit down she uh, nods and asks what you guys are doing out in this area. Just passing through. She chuckles and says, not many come through here anymore. Not many travel alone either. She gives a, a raspy chuckle and says, true, true. But not many will travel with one like me. Why not? You seem pretty nice. A little bit more welcoming she, uh, than most others I've seen. She gives another raspy chuckle before lifting the cloak and underneath most of her body is heavily decayed and she uh drapes it back over before saying now why don't i get to that story i forgot to mention she she is a unicorn but as she begins the story she, her horn lights up and um you start to see images flit in front of you as she begins to speak she says once upon a time there was a kind and beloved noble that lived in a faraway land. And this noble had one child, and he loved her very dearly. One day, that child fell ill, and the nobleman, stricken with grief, began to look for ways to heal her. He went all across the land looking for doctors, both of the magical type and those who offered more dangerous cures. But it was all to no avail. After years of searching, the nobleman's child finally expired. Racked with grief, he began to turn to darker means to bring his beloved child back to him. After many years of trying unsuccessful methods, dark magics, if anything he could get his hooves on, he was greeted by a sly snake. The snake whispered promises of things that he could never have dreamed of been able to do himself if only he would do one simple thing for him. The nobleman agreed without question. So much was his grief for the loss of his child. And finally one day he stumbled across a, an ancient spell that gave him the ability to resurrect her, or so he thought. 
when he finally managed to bring her back, the thing that he brought back was not his child, as it screamed and lashed out. They say that to this day, you, you can still hear it screech and howl at the injustice of what it has become. And with that, the uh, image, images vanish, and she looks at you and says, What do you think? Interesting story. She nods, chuckling, and says, You know, they say that every story has a modicum of truth to it. It's just whether or not you're willing to look for it. And with that, she uh, stands up and trots off into the forest. Our next clip is of the group's first encounter with the murderous scarecrows. Roll clip. You guys see a decidedly larger number of crows, and you also hear something in the trees. <laughs> That's definitely creepy. I feel safe. I wish to set this whole force so, of fire down. <laughs> so, what do you- I'm in danger! <laughs> the forest on fire. That's a bad idea. We should, however, probably not be here. Remember, most of your party is asleep. Paige and Doc oh, are yep. the only ones. Right. Yep. Yeah. I forgot that I was asleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor shoots into the forest. There's no wake-up call like gunshots. So you're yep. just wildly spraying into the forest? I mean, worst case, even if I miss them, I assume they're still going to take cover. Which is uh, much better than it shooting me. So a few moments after the gunshots, and everybody can be awake now, you hear, I see you. What I wish you were a fireball. Why? Because <laughs> that, that's just uh, scary as all hell, and... Uh, Size of just gonna lob fireballs. No, 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 we're in a forest. Do not do that. That is a bad idea. It's dark out here. Oh. So, uh, and, uh, what are you guys doing now? Sai is casting your fireball. Sai is casting I'm, fireball. I am discouraging it, but I am fire. taking aim with my arrows. I cross the bullets. The size of the bullet I'm ball. not stupid enough to set a fire in a forest. I am going to look around and try to pinpoint th where the voice is coming from. Please do before I throw the spell. Roll a perception at a minus three. Okay, I succeed. Okay, so you succeed. I'm just looking around. I'm not really trying to pinpoint. I see anything. Oh shit! Apparently, I can see well in the dark. You guys, at least you think. guys start to hear the sound of something raking against a tree. Headed towards y'all from the west. You also oh. hear uh, this after a moment. It's coming after me. Coming after you? I'm going to be hiding in a tree. But, but what is coming after you? Hold on. Wait. I hold the spell. I'm in a tree. So. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Something's coming after you? What? I'm not the only one who heard what it said, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out. Just trying to figure out why the fuck it sounds so scary. So, if you want, you can go ahead and roll another perception to see if you can spot it in the trees. You ro must do so at a minus four at the moment. Also, everybody okay. roller will save. Oh god. Uh, I was going to perceive first, but it's the will first. What is my will? I rolled a nine. Uh, the will is... Will is ten. Oh, I passed by one. I, I succeed by six for my will set. Check. I five. But I fail my perceive. Okay. So for Ellis, you yes. peering into the woods, you see a shakily swinging lantern, but you can't quite catch a good glimpse of what's holding it. You do get another voice snippet though as it, it speaks again. It shouldn't move like that. It shouldn't move like that? Yeah. Um, what shouldn't it move like that? Uh, There's a lantern in the direction of the forest. Uh, the poor we're walking. So, what does everybody do? I'm going to aim a fireball just in case. 
God damn I'm it, gonna... it's the fire! The fire's on fire! Come on, I... man! I'm Please, hiding in a smart. tree. Can we talk things through? We don't have to fight all everything just because it's scary. This is one of those things that Ty is freaking out, kind of. So, as you guys are watching, because it was a mostly cloudy night right now, the clouds come out from in front of the moon, making it much easier to see, because, you know, there's not a lot of leaves around. There's still some clinging to the trees, but there's not enough to, like, block out the moon right now. And in the direction of where the voices were coming, you see what looks like a scarecrow. Oh. That's a... That's oh. a... No. No, 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 Don't you guys remember the tale of this? We have to run. That thing will kill us and stuff in it. And stuff us in its body. Bullets can't kill magic. Fire can't. I, I cast the spell magic in its direction. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you have to cast said spell. It, let's see if I cast the spell. Oh, come on. Am I, the only I successfully not cast the spell. <laughs> Go ahead I, and roll a will save. I am going to be running. I have to exceed the will save. <laughs> so, oh, God. as far as you can tell, your spell didn't do what you thought it would would do, and instead you feel something primal clawing at the edges of your consciousness, a sort of fear you've never felt before, but you're able to battle it off. I, uh, my fireball goes off in the wild direction. Yes, good job. There is now a, a fire started in the uh, forest. Oh, and ran the other way. Roll a D100. Roll a D100, uh, oh, Ellis. 46. Let's see. So that would be roughly in the northeast, if I'm remembering my compass right. So you, you yeeted it in a northeastwardly direction. We can still go east. Let's leave. So what does the party uh, we do? We need to leave. We're How leaving. stupid can you be? We are leaving. Now. Frightened. Yeah, I'm also kind of leaving. Does somebody grab the Uber? Yes. Yes. I don't know how successful I am going to be at leaving, considering I am still injured. Okay, so oh, someone is going to need to carry you. Everybody does the run. Yes. Uh, yep. yep. Uh, what, what happens if I look back? Mean? Don't. That's the question. I mean, I mean, it was literally saying it needed help. Something was after it, but then no, leave. So no. As, she she already said she looked back. It's too late now. <laughs> as you look back, the uh, scarecrow, which had been standing in a very scarecrow-like pose, drops to all fours and starts skittering after you like some sort of freakish spider. <laughs> Guys, yeah. wait up! Run faster! And you hear this from it. it you. This final clip is of the second story from the storyteller. Roll clip. You come across the same unicorn from earlier, sitting at a campfire again. She hasn't noticed you just oh, yet. Dude. What do? No, we are not talking to her. Oh, well, why not? Approach. You can get answers. Maybe Stranger if we ask finger. directly. We should oh, ask so she directly. Is and it's not the weirdest thing we've seen going around here. One, that's racist. Two. I think I continue <laughs> walking in her direction. I'm just sort I am of paying attention to this conversation. I am staying out of sight. I refuse to interact with her. And we're losing a unicorn. So you do continue mm. to uh, the campfire? Yeah, I continue walking. I do as yeah. well. She actually looks over. back at you this time, and she says, Well, hello! I don't normally well, get repeat visitors this quickly. Hi there! Well, uh, we did, uh... Your visitors don't normally come across scarecrows in the middle of the night. Oh, I, I don't really keep track of what they do and don't come up, up against. I just tell stories. Speaking mm. of Can which, you you have, story you're welcome to... You are welcome to sit and, uh, I have another story I can tell you. I plop onto the ground, so face down, So for everybody tired. that is missing HP and fatigue points, you get one of each for sitting and listening to said story. And as you guys sit down, for the ones who are sitting down to listen, she begins her story. And she says, A long time ago, there was once a great prince from a far-off land. He 
traveled with two friends. One, a mighty mage. The other, a hot-headed monk. The three of them were close friends, and they came traveling to a far-off land. They came to a place where they sought peace and quiet, and for a time they found it. Then, one day, the hot-headed monk disappeared. Of course, the mage and the prince were struck with grief and spent many years searching for her. It was all in vain. It wasn't long before the great prince found a wayward princess who helped him to regain some semblance of sanity. But then a silver-tongued snake stole her away from him. In grief, he turned from a prince to a beast as he mourned the loss of everything he held dear. And what with that, she closes the story and just as quickly as before, disappears off into the forest. Wait a bit. Wait. Uh... She teleported again. And that's all we have time for today. Next Lost Memories highlight will go over what the party ran into following the storyteller's tale. I want to thank Hacks for editing today's video, as well as additional thanks to Forever Free Brony for the intro, outro, and background music. And a big thank you to all of you in the audience. We really appreciate the help in getting us to 2,000 subscribers. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our streams and uploads. Everyone have a great day and drink water.